Hey everyone, it's Wednesday the 7th of June and it's nearly 20 past 8 in the evening. Today's video, well, I've got some model railway stuff to show you in a box up here. Just move a couple of bits out of the way that I've forgotten about. <laughs> forgotten they were in the way. Right, um, and on top of that, um, I want to update you on the man cave over at Mum's, because things are changing. It's moving, not very far, but it is moving. Um, yeah, and just a few other bits I wanted to have a chat about as well. You know, another head's just gone off the camera, hasn't it? So, put the radio there. Right, actually, I want to show you this first. Now, I picked up. Well, it's technically a vintage outside light and it's made by cough tree and these can fetch quite a bit of money on ebay so like i said this is made by cough tree i have got the glass bowl that goes over the end i'll just screw on like that i still see these about on houses as well there are houses that still have these um, this needed a good clean this it was full of crap inside there what I want to do, I'll give this a good rub down, a good clean in there. I'm going to see if that light bulb works, just out of curiosity, and uh, give it a fresh coat of this uh, grey paint. But, uh, I've always wanted one of these in my light collection, and now I've got one. This was only £10 at Alsham Car Boot. He says smashing it on the worktop. <laughs> I thought I'd show you that first because it's right off the top of the box. I am not going to put that there because I can see that falling off. It's not like you can go out and buy those uh, glass bowls for that, uh, them lights. Right, oh, empty can, we'll get rid of that as well. I can't put it in the bin because I've actually got the tripod where the bins usually are. Because I've actually had a a uh, clean up in here and I've mopped the floors so I had the bins out and I thought well before I put the bins back I could set the tripod up there and we can have a look at some model railway stuff so this isn't the original box this is just what I put it in so I got this lot at Alsham car boot sale on Saturday Just slide that back this way um, a lot of this actually came in a box because the seller had a, a box on the floor with a little sign on it that says 30 quid the lot and I could see at least one locomotive that was definitely spares or repairs uh, a whole bunch of track platform pieces in fact I'll show you the platform pieces now provided I'm not throwing them across the kitchen it's just a load of these basically and these bits Enough to make two like this and two end pieces, so I can make two of these up and one, you know, single straight piece with two ends. Um, and I had actually thought about using these on my layout, but I've got another use for these because at some point in the future I want to make another model railway layout, but I want to do something different. I want to make it on some shelves in the lounge and it'll be what they call an end to end so I can only run the tra um, trains from one end to the other I don't know why I've just felt like doing that for a while um, the track I haven't kept or won't be keeping that is still over at Mum's because I just couldn't get it in the backpack or under my uh, moped seat so that um, stayed in the shed but I have kept some points and a power track. That actually came with a control road board, which is in the bedroom. You know, I might actually do this setup a bit more often, because I can actually get past the tripod really easy if I need to. Yeah, I've got a load of points. Some of these, are, I actually believe, are older triangle points, like these two. I'm pretty certain them two are. These are definitely newer. But I think the 
rails are the same size on these ones. And so either way I can put that with my trying stuff. Now, most of what was here, apart from the Hornby platforms and a couple of other bits, the track was a mix of Triang and Hornby. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if these are actually Triang points, but I can't... I can't actually see a name or anything written on... There's something like that. Made in England, that's all I can find written on it. I don't think Hornby had... Did Hornby have those on the side? I don't know. They work fine. want to get to the low cars and the rolling stock because the uh, the box on the floor for 30 quid that had all the track in it and these platform bits also had a whole load of um, rolling stock most of it is actually the older triang stuff but there is some newer mainline stuff in here just trying to make a bit of room by getting all these platform pieces out whilst throwing bits across the kitchen. Just found a dead chip on the worktop. I don't know how the hell that got behind the TV. Can't get to the bin, I don't have to put it on there for now. Right, I think we're good. Oh, there is something in here as well that I actually found on a completely different stall. But it is model railway related, so... I don't know if I'm going to keep these. These are old Triang sort of platform ends. Um, you can't really use them. I don't know if my friend Cat would want these. That's who um, I'm going to sell all that track to if she still wants it, of course. Um, for her layout. They're still perfectly usable. I just, at the moment, haven't got a use for it. And I have got some spare track. I mean, of course, I've got a new track when I do the end-to-end uh, -end layout, but that's... You know, that's not in the uh, near future, that's in the distant future, as it were. I have no idea when I'm going to start that. Anyway, what load of these in? I think these are platform edges, aren't they? Aren't they? No idea what I'm doing. I am just guessing here at the minute. Hmm. Don't know. Uh, I think the last bit of interesting scenery was a few of these, which I probably ain't going to use either. Not unless I use them as a bit of a, you know scenery on the back wall on the end to end. I could do that I suppose. Right. I think there. So this is what I actually found in a box of die cast on a completely separate stall. A little 176 scale MGB Roadster. Made by EFE. I have no idea who they are. What's well, a nice little model. Right, so in total, I got two, three, four, five, six, uh, six, seven, eight locomotives in total. And they're basically spares or repairs. Now, like I said, one of them I could see in the box quite clearly because it was on top. Um, but I'll show you the ones that I actually bought separately because he had some on the main table. So these are the ones that I actually bought. So I didn't buy that one in bits. I've taken that one apart in a vain attempt at getting the damn thing to run. Um, but I think I'm just going to give up on that one. I'll explain why in a minute. So there we go. Those. Um, that's better. <laughs> Those are the ones that I've bought um, from for a tenner each that were on the table. So we've got this older Triang 040. This is the second one of these I've had. But I can't remember why I got rid of the first one. I think I used it for spares for something else. Because, again, just like this one, 
The chimney was snapped off. I suppose I could make something to go on there. Or steal it from another crappy 040 that doesn't work because you pick them up by the dozen. But I love these little 040s because they're so fun to play with. <laughs> I'm a big kid when I have these flying around the layout. Um, this one's not going to run simply because there is no brushes. There's no screw in the rear of the body either, you see. I've got a feeling someone has pilfered the brushes from this one for another model. So, who knows, that might actually work. I'm going to do another video on these, by the way. Um, servicing them and any of them that don't work, I'm going to try and get them to work. And I've actually got two lo locomotives on the way and a chassis. I'll explain how that came around in a bit. <laughs> When we get to this one, because th this is the reason. Anyway, I found Thomas. So I've now got Thomas to pull Annie and Clarabelle, because I've had Annie and Clarabelle in the uh, Rolling Stock collection for a good few years now. That was actually one of the first lots of sort of random railway stuff I found on Marketplace. They were in there when I was first sort of, you know, collecting up bits and bobs. Um, he's no 40 though, and I have found on eBay an 060, which ends tomorrow. I can't remember when, so I'm going to have to check that time because I've actually got electricians coming tomorrow to change the consumer unit. So yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> anyway, because I wouldn't mind the 060 version as well because that's more, you know, like Thomas. So I do believe in the show he was actually an 060. Anywho, I don't really know why I bought this. Because this is now my third Triangenti. Which does actually run. It didn't at first, but it was just a loose wire. I did take the body off and have a sneak peek. So this is just going to need, you know, a bit of an oil up, a bit of a service, a bit of a clean. And that will actually be good to go. And this one ran straight off the bat. It just needs a service. I think that's probably an old train. Looking at those wheel flanges, the flanges are quite deep, so I'm going to guess this is an old train. It doesn't look that deep though. It might run on my layout, okay. When I've got the layout down again, I'm going to have to try. Actually, just like the Ginny, this has got the body screw in the side there. The Ginny's got it in the same place. This could actually be a train. I'm pretty certain it is. Someone's done a bit of a, an odd solder joint there. That's not the way I'd have done it, but hey, it works. So you can't really see it when it's up that way, can you? But then we've got that thing. It was actually quite a nice locomotive. That's why I bought it. What I didn't read on the bottom was that it's made by Mainline. I've had bad experiences with mainline in the past. I don't like them. If I had seen this was a mainline, I would have probably just left it there. <laughs> anyway. Good old chassis problems, which seems to be very common with these mainlines. Body's nice. I love it. It's even got the tender that goes with it as well. So it's... Uh, it is an 060. Just of a different shape and body design to that one. That's all. You've got your water tank there. But uh, the problem is, um, it didn't seem to run when I put power to it. It seemed to be dead as a door now. When I took it apart and I put power to the motor on the two little contacts there, it worked. It spun up. So, I put it all back together, got nothing. Well, actually, all I got was this vibrating um, and a little hum from the motor as if it was trying to spin but was stuck. So I took it apart again, motor ran fine, and put it back together, same problem. So for some reason, when this is together, that motor is not able to spin the gears. So I have actually now sworn off of mainline locomotives, I'm not buying any more. However, 
nice they look because at the end of the day this is just now a giant paperweight I mean I could put it back together and just use it as a display piece but I think I've got enough crap in this flat for display pieces so uh, yeah anyway we'll put that to one side I might try and attempt to fix it one day but yeah I'm just going to leave it at that now so um, he did have some rolling stock on the table as well, but I wasn't that interested in it. Though, when I bought the box on the floor, the 30 quid the lot box, um, he did throw what few items were left on the table in as well. Anyway, this is the one that I could see. Sitting in the top, it's another one of these 060 GWRs. This one is actually different to my other two. Because this one's got a smoke box, my other two don't have that. And actually, this is in pretty good. How the hell has that couple have been twisted that way around? I've only just noticed that. I wouldn't mind betting some kids were given this lot to play with at some point, because that's the only way I can see that that one got twisted like that. It's upside down. <laughs> The wire is off the motor here, but I'm, I'm, if I remember rightly, I did put power to this, and it did try to spin. So I think with a service and whatnot, you could potentially get this one up and running again. But at the least, you know, I've got the whole top bit here is missing, so I can't do much with it as it is. But I just thought, you know, 30 quid for that rolling stock and this, hey, I've got a spare motor and a spare chassis for something else. You know, maybe I can swap a different body onto it. <clears throat> so to me that whole box was worth 30 quid just for that now I've already got a load of Triang track rolling stock and locos well there's another one like I said I've got three of these bloody things now um, so I thought well I can add the Triang stock to the rest of it <laughs> um, oh yeah when I got because I didn't buy the box at first, I went round the whole car boot and then came back and I was actually expecting it to be sold at that price. But it was still there and then I found this one on top. This was on the table. But I'm guessing he just thought he wasn't going to sell it up there so just threw it in the thing. Oh, these were, did I say these were all £10 each, the ones that are on the table? Um, now this one does run, but the problem is the motor gear is not engaging with the drive gear. Now, I've looked under here, and that drive gear actually looks pretty good. So I'm not sure if it's just a problem with the motor not sitting in there right. Or, I didn't actually look at the worm gear on the motor. Maybe that's worn out. Maybe I'll have to change that. But I'm pretty certain I've got a, at least one spare chassis like this anyway. So, I'm pretty certain I've actually got a spare motor somewhere as well that I could steal the worm gear off. Because I don't think I've got a Desmond. But yeah, he was thrown in on top. And then when I got back to Mum's, I was having, you know, a rummage around in, there, in the box and I was taking out all the track, you know, sorting out, ready to bring back here. And I found this B12 in there, which again, it was in one piece until I took it apart. Well, actually I saw that first and I was actually hoping the locomotive for this was in there because I've always wanted a blue Steam logo because I absolutely love that colour. And to be fair, apart from a little bit missing on that pillar, the body's actually in very good condition. I was missing one buffer as well, but I do have a load of spares and a load of other bits I could steal one from. In fact, No, those two are actually slightly different, but you know, I suppose I could take these two out and put them in the other one. And have it, at least it'll have a pair. <laughs> so, the problem with this one is... So, motor runs fine. The issue was... I think it has actually damaged this gear. The motor, yeah, it has. So I'd have to change the worm gear because that looks a bit mangled. I think someone had tried running this as it was. 
um, issue was the drive gear, which I don't think is in here, that was on, you know, the axle bits here, <laughs> had sheared off the axle, there's the axle. Yeah, it just come off it and it was just spinning around on the axle, so that had been um, wrecked. That looks like in the process they've wrecked that. I don't know if they tried running this, you know, up against a wall or something for a long while because <laughs> that's what the con rods look like. <laughs> so yeah, in short, the um, wheel set was completely foobard. But you know, I have got a lot of spare bits. I've got the weight here, which my stepdad said you can also put the uh, decoder on to DCC it. Because he's got one of these up uh, on his layout, all DCC'd as well. Uh, so yeah, I've actually got a box full of spare parts apart from the wheels really. These are the only bits that foobard, I can't do anything with them. And that looks like to me that these um, con rods are uh, riveted to the backs of the wheels. And so I don't think I can just pop them off and pop new ones on. Not without drilling the rivets anyway. Yeah, they are. That, that actually spreads over and lock them in. But, you know, I've got the chassis here. The motor is still good. Apart from the worm gear, I would have to pull that off and replace it. But that's, um... <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a pain to get that off there, but yeah. That is, uh, no good. I mean, yeah, the pickups are all okay. Everything else is okay. So, because I actually like this so much, I thought, well, you know what, I'll use this as an excuse to buy another one. So I tried looking for a blue one. Yeah, they're expensive for a running one. So, I found a BR black one and bought that. And then realised that I was trying Hornby, which is obviously older, and I thought, maybe this one's not going to fit. <laughs> it might fit on the chassis because I was just going to body swap. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, you see, this has got a different, slimmer motor in it to the Triang Hornby one, so I'm not sure it would fit. So I had another look on eBay, and I found an LNER green one and bought that. You know, I thought, because I could body swap that. And then I realised that would look stupid, because the LNER green one's got green wheels. So I thought, well, crap, now I've got two B12s coming, which are the colours that I don't really want. <laughs> Uh, so, I had a bit more of a dig around on eBay and actually found someone selling a replacement chassis for a V12 with this motor, so it's the exact same chassis, with the black and chrome wheels. So I bought that as well. So, when all of those arrive, I can reassemble. Well, I say reassemble, I can put this body on the new chassis, I hope, and uh, um, I'll have three B12s in three different colours. It's just as well I do like the B12. And I had thought about getting some anyway, so, you know, no harm really. I've now got one of each colour, or should have, one of each colour. And a spare motor. So yeah, my eyes did light up when I saw that, because I was like, yes, I've got the blue one. And I was like, no, the wheels are buggered. <laughs> oh well, that's still got a good cold tender. Minus the coupling, these Hornbees, these newer ones, they always do that. But I actually did go on eBay and buy a couple of packs of um, 3D printed ones. They're a bit flimsy, but they work. So, who cares, as long as they work. Right, let's have a look at some rolling stock, should we? So like I said, most of this, apart from a few mainline rolling stock, which actually seems to be really decent, is this mainline um, loco seem to be really crap. So rolling stock, really decent. Loco is really crap. <laughs> anyway. anyway, what have we got? I've got an American caboose. I've no idea what was written on there. I think this is possibly my only piece of American rolling stock. 
possibly. Um, I can't remember what line these green coaches were on. This is an older triangle, you can tell from the coupling. The later triangles had very similar couplings to, or if not the same, as uh, Hornby. You see the early ones had that gap there, it's more like a hook. That's actually bent. That one's a bit bent as well. Don't let kids play with your train stuff. <laughs> <coughs> So we've got, um, we've got Royal Mail wagon. It has got some damage there. But what I could do with that, I could actually weather it all up. You know, make it look really, really tatty, and then just use that as a bit of scenery. Because you know, I'm doing a preserved railway thing. You know, it's meant to be a preserved railway, so. When I have the railway down, I could just stick that on one of the siding, and that could be a bit of rolling stock waiting to be restored. I just got to weather it up. Perhaps I could do the same with that action. Or maybe that is actually worth just keeping that one as is. I've also got a couple, or at least three. Two of them are definitely um, triangle. There's one here I'm not sure of. Yeah, these two are definitely yeah, these two have got triangle on them and they're actually the same, they're just in two different colours. And someone screwed some wood to this one. I'm taking that wood off because I don't like it. But yeah, apart from the actual colour difference, they're um the same. This is more of like a blue-grey colour and this is a grey. And we've got this one here. But they look a bit I think is this a backman with them couplers? I can't see anything on the bottom to um, suggest, or to even a name anywhere on it, so. So I'm just wondering if this could be a main line as well, or a backman maybe. I'll have to compare it with the other main lines in here, actually. And I kept calling these uh, low boys, but they're not low boys. What's the actual name for them? I've forgotten. They've actually managed to snap the hook off this end. It's actually broken off. Ah, I'll see what the other difference is with these. Now I've just looked at the couplers. One of them must be an older release to the other. You see that? They've got the different couplers. Both triang. But he's got the uh, different couplers. Alright. Uh, another triang. Guards van, brake van, 20 ton. Really? Oh, well, a bigger one in here. That says 20 ton on it as well. I think this is a main line. Yeah, it is. Ah! Main line, and that's got the same couplers. And that's got the spring on it. Yeah. So that other. Low loader one, I can't, like I said, I can't remember what it's called. Um, that's a main line. Oh, I just realised it's got the same main line wheels on it as well. Yeah, so identified. Mm, got a, G, uh, a Great Western brake van, which is also 20. That's why I thought that was a bit hard to believe, you know. Mm, oh, it's got some corner damage on that. So hang on, that wheel has popped out of place. There we go. Oh, and that one's done as well. Just pop that back up. Have got it? Yeah. Sometimes they like to do that. Now we've got an old Triang track cleaner. I know Hornby did some of these like this as well. Just put like a foam pad in there and drag this around the track. It's also weighted as well, so it puts a bit of force down. 
I've actually got a green hornby one that's also missing the roof piece. Because you can take them off, you see, and change your weights and whatnot. A new bit of foam. Uh, what else we got? I know that's main line. Is that one a main line? No, I've got another trying truck. That's main line, I'll keep that in there. I've got an odd coal tender there. In BR black, because that's the uh, red and white pin stripe for British Rail. That's what that one is on the Ginny, BR black. I don't know what locomotive that went to, and the coupling bit, the coupler to the locomotive has actually broken off. It's triang though. I can tell from the wheels this is triang. Can you see that? The little axle bearing right in the end there. You can see the metal axle sticking right the way through. You can put modern wheels on these, but it's a lot more work because you have to like glue in little bearings in here for the ends of the modern pointed axle to go into otherwise you can't swap them which is why a lot of mine I just haven't bothered there's another trying truck another mess red bright red that's the only hornby bit of rolling stock in it actually no I'm telling fibs there's another bit the circus wagon there it's lost one of its couplers and it's got the metal wheels uh, what's this one that one's trying to escape it's just off camera as well cat wagon minus the roof from triang I'm telling fibs again because there is another piece of Hornby rolling stock, the United Dairies tank. Now, my stepdad's got a whole train of these and he wanted to find uh, someone who could 3D print the caps because a lot of his are missing and I think they're missing on all of mine. When I say all of mine, I think I've got like three. <laughs> and you look on eBay and so many of them have got them missing. Which is a shame for this one because all of this is intact and the ladders are intact. Because I also find on some of these tankers you get these end bits broken and ladders missing and yeah. So apart from that, what I might actually do with this one because the ladders are flopping around, I might just glue those in place just to stop them flapping about. Uh, so here's two other main line wagons. I've got a hopper and a box car. A long um, brick truck from uh, Triang. Don't have many trucks that are that long. We've got this, which I think is American. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen a wagon quite like this one over here. I, I don't honestly know. I could be wrong. It's got TR written on it, TR742. Triang, maybe. <laughs> We've got a bit of string touch. I wonder if that's why they put that bit of string on there. Oh, well, it's not on there now. Pulled it a little bit too hard, but at least it broke that and not the door. I mean, a lot of this rolling stock for old Triang stuff, it's in really good condition. A shame the locos weren't, but. <laughs> I can't have everything, I suppose. What have we got here? That looks like a triang as well. See, some of these old triangles, like this one, I can change these wheels on. But aren't you looking at those? They might actually run. Is this triang or is this hornby? This could be hornby, actually. That could be a hornby. That's not the correct roof. That was just laying in the box, so I decided to try and put it on there. It needs a bit of a trim. If I trim it up, I could get it to fit, but there's nothing else here that that would have gone on, so I've got this lovely um, mainline truck as well. I really do like that one. I 
THO's W Ward Limited, or is it Thos or Thos? Thos? I don't know. Thot? T W W. Sheffield. Uh, two more bits. Now, this one confuses me because I want to know what it was. I say was because there's clearly a bit missing from there. It's Triang. We've got this little lever there, so if I flick that lever that way, you can actually wind this up like clockwork. Right. And then when you flick this, that spins. So I'm guessing as that sticks out like that, it's meant to hit something trackside to trigger it. Um, and that looks like an operator's cab or something. I'm intrigued. And the mechanism itself still works. The clockwork mechanism still actually works fine. Let's just wind it up. Yeah. Don't know. I'm going to keep it because it is intriguing. And the last piece. Oh, I actually forgot to um, mention that this one was a freebie. He threw that in the box um, from his table, and that one, and the caboose, and this one. He did have a set of, um, or a pair of Triang Teak coaches. Oh, you know, they're Triang because my stepdad looked at them. But, uh, you know, Triang's no good to him. He's got Hornby only, whereas I've got like three different lots of uh, model railway stuff. <laughs> I've got all the stuff that'll run on modern track, on the Hornby and whatnot. And then I've got the Triang, <laughs> and then I've got the uh, three rail Hornby double O stuff. That was a corridor car. And I'm assuming that is a toilet or something on that end. And there's the guard. Perhaps another toilet at that end, I don't know. But it's definitely a usable coach. Now I've got to stack this lot back in here. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really think that was worth the money I spent. Um, most of those locomotives I can get working because um, they are fixable. Unless the motor's completely dead in the little yellow one here, which I, I don't know, it doesn't smell burnt out or anything, so I'm pretty certain that'll uh, spring into life when I uh, find my spare brushes. I don't remember what I did with my spare brushes. <laughs> Let's get this stacked back in here. I haven't got any um, free space in my triangle boxes to put the rest of this. Well, the triangle boxes are literally just a couple of shoe boxes, and they're full. <laughs> so I need to get another plastic tote or something that I can transfer into, and then you know, put all the Hornby and mainline stuff, all the stuff that will run on my layout in the boxes. Obviously not the locos because I need to. Uh, Get those service just a random spare doodah. Why is my brain struggling so much at the minute? Cold tender. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> right. I'm just going to adjust the camera position. Not better. Oh, I don't know if I've actually mentioned this. This TV was free. It's only a little one, but it seems to work. I've not tried the actual TV part of it, but I've um, had a games console connected, and that works fine. It was down by the uh, bins out back here, and by the uh, flats uh, bin area. No remote, but uh, as you will, have, will know if you've seen the uh, Amazon uh, mystery boxes I got, I've got this in there, so I got this working on that, so that's another thing that worked out in the Amazon box. I thought it would, because this came in a box. But yeah, that, that all works, as far as I can tell. Oh, I did get this in here as well. It had one set of wheels missing, and that's what the hookup is like, and a coupler. And there's another bit on that end. I was going to use this as a bit of scenery, maybe. I don't know, though. 
I might see if my friend Kat wants her to make a bit of scenery with on her layout, you know. What you'd have to do is just trim these bits off so they sit level. So it's all level with this centre bit and you can just glue it down because with those little knob knobbly bits where the um, bogies were, it just topples over. Might help if I actually show you what I'm bloody talking about. So it just does that. Of a uh, hornby platform roofs as well, but I haven't got the bits that support them. I don't know if I'm going to go hunting on eBay at some point for them. Between two locos and a chassis, though, I think I've spent enough on eBay at the minute. The reason I'm going to put those in last is because obviously I want to do a video servicing them and whatnot, so I need to get to them. Oh yeah, I've got this as well. I could use that on that shelf layer if I want to do as well. Oh, it does come apart. I thought someone had actually glued that together. No idea what class of loco that one is, but I am really looking forward to getting the B12 up and running. I'm receiving the other two B12s actually. I have been wanting to uh, up the Steam Loco collection a bit, or part of the collection, I should say, because I've got quite a lot of diesels in there. Yeah, I think I'll check that that motor does actually run, and this will probably be just delegated to spares for the, for the time being, unless I can find you know, another completely busted one on eBay that I can steal a couple of bits from. I keep picking this one up by the body. Don't pick this one up by the body. It's not screwed on. And the couplers are completely screwed on this, but I can change them, thankfully. So this, is, this would be, I believe, my only trying 040 if I can get it to run. And the Ginty. Now you see, if these Ginties would run on my friend Kat's layout, I'd have asked her if she wanted one, but they won't, won't run on that track because she's using modern track like I am. Because the old Triang track, the rails are deeper. Um, whereas modern track like this, the rails are shallower. I think when they actually went fully over to Hornby, they fully changed the track to uh, the shallower style. But I have got a load of the um, deeper rail Triang track as well. Because I actually bought partially complete um, old trying set from the diecast guy actually it's something he'd acquired uh, the loco worked fine in that I got that all up and running actually on the lounge floor I bet a lot of people wouldn't like to see that because I hate seeing people run stuff on floors especially carpets you know there's um, a YouTuber I've followed for a few years now, he's called Sam's Trains, and I actually do like him. I do like the reviews he does, you know, they seem to be very um, non-biased when he does the reviews. He'll always list the good points, he'll always list the bad points, and obviously sometimes with some locos there's more bad points to good points. Then you might, he might do a loco where there's more good points than bad points, but... I don't think you'd ever get, well, I know you wouldn't ever get the perfect model that doesn't have a flaw somewhere. Well, you know why? Because it's not going to please everyone. Someone's going to find something they don't like with it. Which is why I always say perfection doesn't exist. It's in the eye of the beholder. Right, I need to get that worktop bloody cleared at some point as well, don't I? 
Maybe I can do that while the sparks are here because I'm not going to have power for several hours tomorrow. Because they're changing that consumer unit and they were going to change the sub-main downstairs as well. I don't know if they still want to do that. Because um, it's a bit of a bummer of a job as well, that's in a tight space. Um, I'm just going to grab myself a drink out of the fridge. It's literally just behind you. I'm behind you. Oh, you can probably hear me rattling about me. There we go. Oh. So, oh, you've probably seen the big stereo on here as well. That was actually a car boot find for a tenner. Um, I actually thought only one channel was working, one speaker, but through the radio, both speakers work. It's only in the tape deck, one side is stronger than the other. So, I'm guessing the heads might want a good clean, because I haven't done that yet. But other than that, the tapes did sound like they were playing fine. A bit muffled on this one, so like I said, it, may, it needs a bit of a service. But for £10, I think this unit is probably the smartest one I've got. I have my portable ones. Apart from that Hitachi that I've got at Mum's, that is a lovely unit. That does need a bit of work. So yeah, I've put batteries in that, so that's ready to go. I only put the batteries in this one because it sounds better. And I thought, if I'm going to be listening to a radio for most of the day, I'm going to want to listen to something. I know the batteries will last, and I've got plenty of new batteries, and I've got all them bloody um, Amazon ones. So I'm not short of batteries. Or radios. Because I've actually got another one in the bathroom. Um, there was one on the hall floor, but I've moved that. That's in the bedroom now. That's not a bad little radio. Yeah, I've got, I've got plenty of radios. <laughs> They're not going to be a problem. Right. Now, I didn't actually think this was still going to be available. I was just randomly looking through Facebook Marketplace and saw this advert again. I just thought, hmm, I wonder if they are still available. Because I only wanted the PS2 controller, because many of mine don't work. I think I've got like three I've managed to get together. Out of like six or seven. I don't know if it's on, is it in view? Yeah, there's a pile of them here. These ones don't work. And there's one, two, there should be a silver one somewhere. That doesn't work. And one in bits. So there's actually four. And what have I got over here? Oh, I've now found another one that doesn't work. Oh, these ones could be the working ones then, because I've got a pile over here of four. Yeah, okay, these two are the working ones, so I've got two working ones. And one of those, uh, this one I actually got Alice from Carboot sale a few weeks ago for 40p. He was selling everything for 25p, you know, he's one of them stall holders that have boxes of crap all on the floor, you know, and his was all 25 pence an item, but I didn't have any change. So I just gave him two 20p's and said, keep change. <laughs> and, uh, it does work. Works nicely actually. It feels just as good as an, you know, a proper PS2 controller. So at the moment I've only got one working, genuine PS2 controller, so I can get the other ones working. There's at least one that's got analogue drift. The silver one is acting like one of the buttons is stuck down permanently. Um, but they're not, they're all free. Um, I suppose the analog drift one would be easy to fix because I could just steal a, you know, an analog stick off one of the other ones. Because a couple of the other ones, the X buttons don't work. Two of them with the same issue. But yeah, this lot was 20 quid in here. So I was going to say I could test this tomorrow, I can't because I've got no electric. Probably not until the uh, middle of tomorrow afternoon at the least. So I've got one genuine one here. Let's just have a feel of the buttons. Alright, it's in good cosmetic condition, including the um, pads and the thumbsticks. Got one of those. And I've got one for the PS1 as well. 
which is actually better than the other ones I've got, so I'm going to probably keep this one or give it a test. And a friend of mine's got a PS1, which I uh, gifted him, so I might gift him one of my other controllers as well. I can't remember how many I gave him. I'll have to ask him. Right, what else have we got? Ah, a spare AV cable, which I was uh, get, actually getting short of. Um, something I didn't know, know existed. I've actually got an extension cable, which in my lounge at the minute might not be a bad thing. No idea that those existed. Um, I can't... Oh, I might actually eBay these because I don't think I've got useful on the infrared receivers for the remote control you could get. Not unless I could find the remote control, you know. So it allowed you to use your PS2 like a DVD player. You could play DVDs on them. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six memory cards. And one of those is a genuine one. I have no idea what about this one, but this has got a switch on it that says card one, card two. Most of those, apart from the PS2 one, are all um, aftermarket ones. Actually, as that's an 8 megabyte one, I think that might be a PlayStation 2. I'm going to give my friend one of these. Because I've actually got enough for mine, and I've got enough. I've actually got a brand new one of these still sealed in a packet. I want to keep that one sealed in a packet. Got that one, what else we got? It's got a little red LED on this one. Gamester. That just has memory card written on it, that's a lot of use. So does that one. Hmm. I'll gather up all my memory cards and go through them and I'll decide uh, what ones I want to keep and what ones I don't. But yeah, I've I thought that was worth 20 quid. I said really I only wanted it for the PS2 controller because mine no worky. Well I've got two but I wouldn't mind you know some spares at least. I keep working on at the car boots when we go to them. Um, but mum has noticed the same thing because we go to the same one all the time. For the most part it's the same stalls and the same sellers. You do get some new ones there you know. But, yes, yeah, so it gets to the point where you don't really find much because it's not a lot changes from week to week. So I did suggest, you know, we try out some of the other car boots in the area. You know, there's one at Stalham, which is nine miles from here, eight miles from here, something like that. You know, that's not too far. There's uh, a few more in some of these seaside towns and whatnot. Anyway, what did I say I was going to talk about at the beginning of the video? Oh yeah, the man cave. So at the moment, it's in an 8x10 shed at the top of Mum's garden. Right. Now originally, before my youngest brother moved to Ireland with his girlfriend, he bought that just to store his stuff in when they first moved into the bungalow because at the time he was living with mum and my stepdad but then he moved over to Northern Ireland with his girlfriend um, and uh, yeah you know mum and my stepdad said I could use the shed and then my stepdad built a lean-to down the side of the bungalow so I don't know how bloody long that is but it's quite long quite wide actually, it's got to be a good eight, nine foot wide. Um, and he was actually going to use that to do certain things in an extra storage and whatnot. But then he said to me a couple of days ago, no actually it was yesterday he said to me, he said, would you want to use that as your workshop instead of the wooden one up the top of the shed? He said, then I can just use, we can use that wooden one for storage. And he said, you know, it'll just make more sense if you struggle, you know, <laughs> dragging your bikes up the garden to work on and then dragging them back through and everything, he said, it just make more sense for you to use that. He said, the only thing is, you know, we're going to have to keep 
a clear way through because it's access to the back garden as well. I thought, hmm, do I really want to make, you know, that compromise to get a bigger shed or a bigger work area? I thought, yeah, I can live with people walking through. It's not going to be that often anyway. Barely actually ever use that side bit unless, you know, my stepdad wants something for the back garden, like some compost plants, you know, I don't know, something for the fish pond. Taking garbage out from the workshops when we've had a clear out and whatnot. Which we need to do. We've got a trailer full. I know we've probably got more than a trailer full's worth of stuff sitting in the back. <laughs> really need to get that done. I might see if he wants to do it this weekend actually, because I've run out of bike projects anyway, so I want to see what's down the tip. <clears throat> I really do enjoy building bikes up. I've actually got Still got two bikes in the lounge. I actually brought one back up this evening. It's a, a blue and black Claude Butler mountain bike I bought a week or so ago for 30 quid. And I rode it back and it rode quite nice. It needed some, you know, a bit of a service and a bit of TLC, but it rode quite nice. And I thought, I'm keeping it because I like it. I really, really like this bike. I like the colour scheme. Which, coincidentally, is the same as that free rally mountain bike I got couple of months ago. That's black and blue as well. So, uh, yeah. In exactly the same places. I've just realised that as well. Black suspension forks. Main part of the frame is blue. And black at the rear. <laughs> anyway. Um, I did sort of uh, tart it up a bit. I put brand new pedals on because, well, one of them was broken anyway. Uh... What else did I do? I put brand new handlebar grips on, set the brakes up for my preference and whatnot. In fact, they still need a bit of an adjustment. I had the gears working, but I sat out there for about four days and now the gears don't want to work. Don't want to shift down properly and I don't want to go in first. So I thought, sod it. I went down to Wilco's, I bought two new gear cables. And a brake cable just because I wanted the outer, and then found some outer cabling here that I could have used anyway, so that was pointless. But I can always use the outer anyway, or a brake cable, so no big deal. I'll just put it over at Mum's with all the other spares. <clears throat> yeah, so that's a job for tomorrow. While I'm, you know, doing all this electrical work, I could sit in here and. Uh, fit the new gear cables. I'll change the tyres as well for a pair. For a matching pair because it had odd tyres on it anyway and the front one didn't have a lot of life left in it so I went digging in my shed um, outside and uh, found a pair of tyres up. Not an exact match but they're a better match. They're close. <clears throat> Very close. The one downside, going back to the, my new man cave over at Mum's, is that there's no electric, so there's no lighting, which I don't think I really need. Not this time of year anyway, but I will put some under there, just in case we do get a dull day and for winter use and whatnot. <clears throat> no outlets, no bench, <laughs> so I've got to sort all of that out. Um, timber to build the bench frame with is not a problem, we've got loads of that. I just haven't got nothing to use as a top. And uh, I'm just going to leave the other ones up in the top shed. But what I've decided to do electric wise is because the top shed is just going to be used as storage, so at the very most we just need a light up there. Um, I might just put an LED baton up there, just a you know, BC bulb fitting. Um, just so we can see if we need to, maybe in winter, but it's going to be storage for gardening stuff mostly and stuff that's hardly used. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to spur off the sockets in my stepdad's shed because at the moment I run a feed from my stepdad's fuse box in his workshop to my current man cave. 
then I've got a fuse box in mine. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that feed out and reroute it to the um, lean-to. And like I said, just spur off for the light and the outside socket off of my stepdad's sockets. You know, this, the outside socket is literally used for the lawnmower. That is it. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about, you know, overloading or anything like that. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And the light, like I said, will probably barely ever be used, but it's just going to be good to have one up there. And that just means all I've got to do is just to spur it. I've just got to run in a cable. Because there's currently a spur in my stepdad's shed. Because I didn't have a long enough cable at the time. So I ran it down as far as it would go, put in a few spur, and then ran it along. Because I thought if anything happens in there, I've got to shut off in here as well. <clears throat> so I've just got to go from the existing spur to one of the sockets, that's all. Yeah, I don't know why I keep doing that. That seems to be a habit I've developed recently. Um, I think for now, I'm going to go with fluorescent lights because that's all I've got. I've been looking at the price of decent LED fittings and they're bloody expensive, so they can sit on that for a bit. I don't want cheap nasty ones either, so... Um, I've got one LED fitting that I might stick up somewhere. And what I'm going to do, so I don't have all the lights on at the same time, because I'm probably not going to need all the lights on at the same time. I'm going to have them on separate switches. And I do plan to put at least four lights up in there. And they're going to be twin, three of them are going to be twin fluorescents because I've only got three. I wish I had four. Um, and I'm going to put one above where the workbench is going to be and that will be on its own switch. I'm going to put two down the main walkway bit. They will be on their own switch as well. And a third one on the switch by where the current shelves are going to be, wherever I'm going to put those. I haven't decided yet. And that's going to be the lighting. And then, of course, the sockets I mostly want at the bench, but I might put at least one on the other side. Right here. Anyway, I need to pause you for a bit. Because... Right, I'm finally back. It's now uh, quarter past ten. Um, I say finally back because this is like my third attempt at this second part to the video. Anyway, so what did I want to talk about in part two? Oh, a bit more on the uh, man cave, the new one over at Mum's. So, um, yeah, my stepdad basically said yesterday, you know, did I want to use the lean-to that he's built down the side of the bungalow? as my workshop and then he can store all the garden tools and whatnot up in the top shed he said that just makes more sense to me and I thought yeah that does and then he said the only thing that you've got to remember is that is still a, a through way from the front garden to the back garden so that's still got to be you know kept clear the walkway bit and he said but it's only when we need to I don't know, bring some timber in or wood for the burner or some compost or coal for the wood burning, you know. Which isn't very often, so I thought, yeah, I can live with that. <laughs> I'm getting a bigger workshop, I can live with that. So, it does mean I've got to sort the electrics out because it currently has none. <clears throat> You know, there's no lighting, no outlets, no nothing in there. So my plan is to currently take the feed from the current workshop I've got, and it'll sort of, I think it's an 8x10, something like that, wooden shed, and uh, run that to the lean-to. Um, which is quite easy, because at the moment it's just a cable that runs from my stepdad's consumer unit in his workshop, to a f switched fuse spur, which is at the other end of his um, workshop, because at the time I didn't have a long enough bit of cable. And I thought if I put a spur in, and then join the other bit of cable up, um, if anything went wrong and I needed to shut that down for whatever reason, I can. I can just come in here and just flip the switch and take the fuse out. 
So um, yeah, I'll take the current feed from that fuse spur um, and run it. I've got some longer cable that will actually run the full length now, so I'll just take that out and put a new run in out to the lean to. And then I'm going to run just a bit of cable from the nearest socket in my stepdad's shed up to that spur. And then basically from that spur just to the socket and lights, light, that's going to be in that top shed. I don't think I'll leave the sockets on the wall because I don't think they're going to be needed. Uh, but what I will leave up is the outside socket because he uses that for when he cuts the grass. So I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue, you know, just to spur it from his. That's it, it's only going to run the lawnmower and the light. I'm just going to put just an ordinary. Have I got one in here? Yep. I think I've got some of these over at Mum's. Just one of these in the shed. Maybe two if I'm feeling ambitious with a couple of LED bulbs in. Just so there's some light in there if you need to get something out of there in winter because. Stepdad doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to put a lot of other stuff from the uh, lean to up there as well, at the bloody way. When I start swapping things around. So if I'm going to use it as a workshop, I'm going to primarily want my bits in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it was just the gardening stuff, I probably wouldn't even bothered with a light, because the chances of going in there in winter would be slim, especially at night. So, but you never know. <clears throat> I'd rather have it in there and not need it than need it and not have it, so. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. So I'll take my fuse box out of there as well. And I'll put a smaller one in or another spur or something, I don't know. The only thing I've actually got to buy is some trunking for the sockets in the uh, um, lean-to. Because I just don't want a bare cable on the wall like I've got in the wooden shed at the minute. Um, as it's going to be down near the bench, I'd rather put it in like a trunking or something just to give that added protection. And lighting, I've actually chosen fluorescent lights because that's what I've got. <laughs> actually, I've got one LED which I might put above the bench or above the... Um, yeah, it might go above the bench, actually. I don't know yet. But either way, I've got a twin fluorescent over at Mum's and I've got two twins here as well. So I'm going to take my two twins out of here and put those in. I'm going to put those sort of on the ceiling above what I'm going to call the gangway, basically, or the work area. <clears throat> the gang work area <laughs> um, but the whole roof is transparent because my stepdad used um, corrugated like plastic sheeting for the roof so during summer I'm not going to need the lights it's going to be hot as hell in there but uh, I'm going to put some fans up in there so it might make things a little easier but I doubt I'm going to use the lights that often unless I'm doing something in there in winter in the evenings um, so, I don't think fluorescent lights, at least in my workshop, aren't going to be too much of an issue. And I'm not going to have it switched so all of them come on at the same time. I'm going to have them so they can be switched in sort of, well, I'll have the ones down the gangway on one switch. Whatever I'm going to put above the um, work badge on its own switch, which I'll probably, probably put by the workbench actually somewhere. And then where the shelving is, so I've got some light there and some extra work light as well, I'm going to put one up there, and that'll be on its own switch as well. It means running more cable, but actually not that much more cable. It would be if I was going to have all four lights, because I think I'm only going to need at least four up there. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that's. I don't think I'm going to need to switch all four individuals. Going to be that would be extra cable, an extra length of cable. 
So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Just trying to think what would be easier, to run the feed straight to the light or to the switch? Just trying to think what would be wire, um, easier wiring wise to the switch, I think, actually. Because I've got Wagos. So I just bunch all the neutrals up into a Wago connector. The same with the earths. Because obviously, metal fittings, I'm going to have to earth them. <clears throat> got earth sleeving. Um, I try my best these days not to use what we call chocolate blocks or connector blocks. Because I don't like them and I never have, not really. You know, back in the day, that's all we had. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, yeah, so I just find with connector blocks, if you're doubling up wires, they can be a bit of a bitch to get both wires to actually, or the screw to bite down on both wires. I'm always swearing at them because I can guarantee one of them wires is going to pop out three or four times before you get both wires to, you know, lock in there with the bloody screw. Oh, I hate it. Absolutely hate them for that. Whereas with Wagos, and if you've got the pushing ones, which I've actually discovered are really only suitable for solid core wires, um, you just push them straight in and they are a pig to pull off. They really are. I've pulled wires out of connector blocks with a lot less effort. <laughs> um, Wagos, I've really struggled. It can be done, but I've had to fight them. They really don't want to come off. But yeah, I discovered recently that um, flexible wires or stranded wires aren't really suitable for the push-in type. You'd want the um, Wagos with the flip-up locks for those, really. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I didn't realise I was going to need those. So... My stepdad has just had several teeth removed after finding a dentist. It's really hard to find a dentist in this country and pretty much impossible to find a dentist that will take NHS patients. But anyway, he's had these teeth removed by his dentist um, and ideally he needs false teeth. Um, which is Actually, he went fit and... Yeah, I think he actually got them today. Now that I think about it. Anyway. <clears throat> you know, they're not cheap. Like, him and his dentist, you know, they talk through the options of the different you know, types of false teeth you can have. He's obviously gone for the cheapest ones. But the most expensive ones are implants. At £7,000 a tooth. One implant at seven grand. Ow! It's no wonder any celebrities have that done. <laughs> Jesus! Um, yeah. So, you know, his dentist suggested, um, as she and her husband want wanted their garage, big double garage, on a brand new build, it's a new build, um, and want the garage all um, plasterboarded out, you know, stud walls built, plasterboard on, with insulation as well, sealing up, um, lights, sockets, blah blah blah. Um, so, she suggested that if my stepdad would do that for them, they'd do the teeth for nothing. Basically, all, well, for his labour, if you like, and for him, for you know, building the garage, it's sort of like a trade, I suppose, like a modern day trade. Um, so, of course, stepdad can't do electrics, so that's where I came in. <laughs> and I just like getting out of the place, and, you know, and you know, going for a ride, so I'm quite happy to do it. But uh, I was doing the downlighters because they're using GU10 downloads what would have been halogens back in the day but obviously they're LEDs nowadays um, which came with little connector blocks now at first I thought nah I'm not going to use those 
I've used the way those because easier. Yeah, they are. But the wires that go down to the GU10 holder are flex. They're um, stranded. Now, they do push into the Wagos, they don't grip. So when I'd gone round and done all 14, you know, I did the main turn on, you know, the ceremonial turn on to see if anything let out the magic smoke, which it didn't. But four of them didn't work. So I got lazy, I didn't fancy running up and down a ladder with a pencil to mark which ones weren't working. So I thought, I'll tape it to a stick. There was a bit of a two before about that long laying there, something like that. And I just take the pencil to the end of it and I'm just going around like that, scribble, 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 scribble. And there's one I put the you know my extended pencil up to and I knocked it, just knocked into it gently, and the whole thing fell off the ceiling. And I just like I just said to my stepdad, well, that's why that one doesn't work. <laughs> So I actually went round all 14 again using the provided connector blocks, but I didn't take the way it goes off. What I did, I cut some blue and brown 1.5mm cable up in like little lengths like that, something like that, only roughly, to use as like jumper wires so I could push one end into the way goes and then the other end into the connector blocks. It's a hell of a lot easier. Not the way I'd have liked to have done it, but there's a couple there I tried doubling up the wires on to begin with, and that's actually why I wanted to use the Wagos. Because I had that problem. Bloody wires kept popping out. They would just would not both stay in there. One of them kept popping out. So yeah, I didn't fancy pulling off the Wagos that are already there either, because like I said, they grip. They grip really well. So, <clears throat> probably not the ideal way, but it works. And like I said, it's not the way I would have wanted to have done it, but yeah. I had to do um, halfway through, he changed what he wanted to do as well. <laughs> the dentist husband, that is. He wanted the lights switched on in like two different sections, if you like. So basically, what I did, I just halved it. So one half is done by one switch, and one half is done by the other switch, and I've got to turn them around. Because if I stand and face the side garage door like this, and I've got the light switch there, so you've got your double light switch, and your two banks of lights, the left switch does the right hand bank, and the right switch does the left hand bank of lights. Um, so that's easy, I just take the switch back off the wall, which I've got to do anyway, because all of the sockets and everything will come back off the wall for painting. Um, so when I do that, I'm just going to swap the two lives over. That's all for the two sets of lights. That's all I've got to do. <clears throat> yeah, it's all good fun though. I'm enjoying it. Ooh. And so ever since my stepdad told me I could have the uh, lean-to as a workshop, I've just been running the images and things, you know, and the plans through my head, you know, where I want to put things and... <clears throat> Might have been why I had trouble sleeping last night, because it made my mind just busy. <laughs> and, you know, I've been, aw yeah, I've been awake since about half four. Went to bed at about eleven and actually dozed off. And I've actually discovered something. I doze off a lot faster if I'm laying on my side. I haven't got two pillows and I don't like two pillows. So I sort of stick the pillow up against the headboard. So I'm sort of laying down with my head in that sort of position. Sometimes I'll bring my hand up while I'm out and I can doze off. I'll go out like a light when I sleep like that. Especially if I've had a, you know, a busy day doing something around here or whatever. I've not been sat on my ass all day. Um, but before, I used to struggle, <laughs> and actually before, and this is an embarrassing thing, I used to do what they call headbanging, and I've always done that since I was a kid, um, and there is something that they call that, but that's just how I used to make myself go to sleep. <clears throat> um, but yeah. Completely stop that now as well as like I broke that habit. 
which is great because I never like doing that in any way. Oh, another thing I've actually found myself doing is actually sitting in bed when I've been playing with the phone because I suffer heart with heartburn. Sometimes that's bad at night, so I'll sit in bed with a couple of antacids in my mouth and I'll just play games on the phone. Pardon me, radio on. And I've actually found myself dozed off like that and the phone just laying in my lap when I wake up. <laughs> I actually have to be really tired for that to happen though. <clears throat> I need to get a better fan because that one doesn't blow enough, doesn't move enough air for my liking. <clears throat> so I think I'm prepared for tomorrow. I've got the radio. I've got a choice of radios. I've got a laptop as well which is fully charged. Because I bought my um, Dell laptop back from Mum's. Because I use the desktop there now, don't I? I've got that set up in the man cave so... If I want to do anything, I usually just flick that on when I'm up there and I need to search Google or want YouTube on or want Facebook on, Discord, I've, just, I've got that. And it's got a web camera up there as well now. So, <laughs> at some point, I will do live streams from the workshop. That's what I'd like to do. And I can point the camera down to whatever I'm working on. In fact, I've got more room in this one, the new workshop, to do that in. So even though I've got to, you know, put up with probably the odd times when my stepdad's got to bring things through at the back garden, that's fine. I can put up with that. I'm getting an upgrade. I'm getting a bigger workshop. Um, I've also got a camcorder that I got from a car boot two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, it wasn't last weekend, it was the weekend before. 15 quid, Samsung camera. Like new. <laughs> now, no memory card, I had to put one in. I've got an 8 gigabyte in it for now. I will eventually upgrade it. It's not an HD either. So I would like to upgrade that at some point. Um, <clears throat> well, it's either that or I'll take my other, my other Sony Handycam over there. that one is HD so I might actually take that one. I'll try and if people don't like it with the Samsung then I'll use the other Sony Handycam. How does that sound? Yeah that's what I'll do. <clears throat> I'm wondering if I should take my wireless mouse back to Mum's and use that as the mouse in the workshop instead of a wired one because wired ones get on my nerves. It'd be just one less wire out of the way. So I've got it here. It's a silver crest. I don't the battery's gone dead, but usually when you have to hit the buttons, it turns itself on and like wakes it up. Nope, those batteries haven't leaked. I put some brand new energizers in this and they leaked in a few weeks. These energizers have been perfectly fine though. Click. I'm not sure if that dog is over this way or over that way, but they let the dog out. It just barks like that when it's ready to go in. That'll probably be its only bark actually, because they are pretty good at letting it in. <clears throat> it never does it during the day though. At least I never hear it. Yeah, but I'm not sure where that lives. There's some, well, it used to be a dentist clinic there, and then it got turned into flats. So there's some flats there. I'm not sure if it's there. And there's a, a bungalow just over here, and the back garden sort of ends roughly round point. So I don't know if it's there either. Could we take a pick? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, is there anything else I can think of? Oh. I have, at some point, I don't need to quite yet, but 
At some point I need to go down to the shed and sort out what bike projects I want to go over to Mum's and basically put all the parts so I can get to them quite easily because they're all going to go over to the workshop because I'm not going to do a bike city, the only bikes I'm going to do are my own ones when they need repairs that's it I'm not doing anything else and the only reason for that is I recently put a few items of scrap metal at the end of this block which is something I've done in the past I haven't done it for about three years actually if not longer but something I've done in the past a couple of times and no one's ever said anything so I thought well it's not going to hurt if I do it again it's just three bike frames and three wheels and a couple of old metal chairs that I picked up for free and I put out back for people to use and they never used them so I thought I'd tidy the place up and get rid of those as well then if nobody wanted them or used them um, yeah so well actually the chairs were an afterthought so at first I just had the three bike frames and those three wheels <clears throat> and the only reason at the end of the block is because that end is what faces the road that's why people get confused when they come to my address because it's not that obvious at first they always go to the block of flats opposite this because the front of their flats face the road this one doesn't that's the front of my um, block of flats <laughs> we're sort of built in a different direction I'm guessing it's because that's the only way they can fit it on this um, piece of land but anyway you know I did put a sign on it that said free scrap so uh, you know when I've done it in the past it's usually gone within a week usually less than a week it's gone <clears throat> um but I did notice a couple of days later after the wind had started to blow the bloody sign off and it got a bit damp someone had taped it on upside down and written on the back move this crap now <clears throat> and that actually did piss me off because you know and I'm not having a go at the guy but I'm just making a point the old guy on the ground floor in the wheelchair he's got a dilapidated Range Rover in the middle of the communal car park, the resident car park, sitting lopsided because the two tyres on the driver's side are totally flat. In fact, the front one's not even on the rim anymore. The beading's popped off the rim. Um, you know, it's a right. It's an eyesore basically. There's rust holes developing in the boot lid. Pardon me. It's full of green stuff from the trees and whatnot, and there's actually wildlife growing on the damn thing. <laughs> the steering wheel's gone mouldy. You know, it is just a general horrible eyesore. But, in fairness to it, if you actually cleaned that up, it's been sat for about three years. You'd probably want to do a brake overhaul on it and whatnot as well. But that would actually go again. It is solid underneath. I've had a look. It is solid underneath. <clears throat> But yeah, there's that, and then he's got a motorbike out front, and some plastic chairs over there. He did have a table out front as well, but that got nicked. That's not the only thing that poor old boy has had bloody nicked either. Why can't people just leave things alone? <clears throat> anyway. Um, you know, it just annoyed me, you know, that no one has ever put such a notice on his, I suppose, junk, if you want to call it that. Whatever you want to call it. But they pick on my few little bits of uh, scrap metal that's not really doing anyone's harm. And I am making an attempt to get rid of it. You know, I had free scrap written on it. So it's not like I just fly tipped it there for, you know, I don't know, the council will come along and take it. <clears throat> In my mind, it's no different to someone putting it at the end of their driveway and doing the same thing, which you see people do. In fact, at a pub I pass regularly when I'm, when I'm uh, riding over to my mum's, they actually had a kid's slide put out front of theirs with free on it. That was gone when I rode home that day. It was there when I rode two mums, when I rode back, it had gone. <clears throat> and that pub is literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, you know, I don't see me putting a scrap at the end there with the same sign on it, you know, saying free or free scrap or whatever, as being any different. 
I just haven't got a driveway to put it at the end of. <clears throat> and I had it advertised on Marketplace. And actually someone today, they, um, well the first person that was going to pick it up today had to cancel because they no longer, they wanted just the bike frames. I did offer the chairs but they said they just wanted the bike parts but they no longer needed them. Um, and then literally a couple of hours later another person responded to the advert and said they could come like within 15 minutes to pick it up. Because he makes some like custom bikes and things. Um, he said his missus wanted him to build like a recumbent cycle. And he said, well, you, you've got the bicycle shape right there. <laughs> <clears throat> In fact, my friend Kat, she's got a recumbent trike. I haven't ridden it yet. It does need some work, but I think that would be quite nice to ride. I've never ridden anything like that. I don't like the idea of being that low to the road. You know, cars don't like to see you when you're sitting on a normal bike. They often don't like to see you when you're on a moped with, you know, big headlight and tail light shining. <clears throat> I very quickly learned that one. That uh, doesn't matter if you're on a motorised set of two wheels or a pedal-powered set of two wheels. Drivers just don't seem to give a damn about you. Well, I say that. Most do. Most are good drivers. You just get that odd one who have to be a dick. <laughs> at least every time I take that moped out, there's at least one. Almost every time. I won't say every time, but almost every time. <clears throat> you know, I don't... I'm, I, I want to try... And sad that I'm not trying to paint every driver with the same brush. Because I'm not. But my wording can be quite poor at times. But uh, yeah, it just, oof. it does annoy me when they just, it seems like they think their trip is more important than your life, you know. So they don't care if they get close to you, they don't care what could happen. As long as they get to where they're going, that's all they care about, whether it goes tits up or not. Which is why I'm going to start wearing a helmet cam. So I haven't got a handlebar that I can actually bolt it to because of all the plastic, you know. It's a moped. Well, technically a scooter. A 50cc scooter. So it's just got plastics. That's all the handlebar is. There's two little bits at the end. And that's it. That you hold on to. <laughs> that's all there is. Um, so my only other option would be to mount the camera on me somewhere. You know, either get the chest mount and put the camera there because I've got all, you know, the casing for it. I just need the mounts. I have got one which I got at car boot here in town um, which has still got the sticky mount to stick on a helmet or something but I don't know if it's going to stay there I guess I'm just going to have to try it one day and just see if it is going to stay there I might try it without a camera in it just in case <laughs> um, but technically I've actually got two cameras that I could mount on that Because when I bought all them bits, a camera was with it. Um, and then I've got the camera that I've already had. I've barely used I've used it on a bicycle a few times. But Sod's Law is, every time I use that camera, I have it turned on on my bike. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> as soon as I ride out without a camera, guarantee something's going to happen. I'm going to wish I had that camera. I don't know, that's just how my luck works. <sighs> wow, it's been rambling for half an hour. <laughs> well, a little bit longer I've gone than that clock. Has that one slowed down a little bit? Oh, I might slow down a bit. Oh, that one might be slightly off actually because we had like a brief power cut this morning while I was in Sainsbury's. I'll be up early in the morning as well for these electricians that are coming. Because the appointment is for the 8th of June between 8 and 5. Well, for the sort of. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened to my tongue there. For the sort of job they're going to do, you know, complete fuse box replacement, they're going to be here early in the morning. Because, you know, that's not a job that they can do in an hour, so they're not going to be here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <clears throat> You know, which is why I've got some batteries in this radio, because it sounds better. 
probably the best sounding um, portable unit I've actually got of that style, you know, with the cassette decks. Anyway, I'm going to shut the video down here, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. As always, I will leave links in the uh, video description down below to uh, my other two YouTube channels and the Discord server, so feel free to head on over and check those out and maybe consider subscribing as well. You know, it is free after all, and you get notified whenever I upload videos. <clears throat> See, I haven't got to search for me every time. You should get the little notification. Um, it's a bit confusing that they do call it a subscri um, subscribe, really, because you do usually associate subscribing with paying, but not on YouTube. All free. Um, and of course, check the Discord server if you've got Discord, of course. Come and have a chit chat. I'm on there most of the time. <clears throat> um, I don't have it on my phone yet. I still haven't sorted it out for the phone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm on most of the time, especially when I'm at home because the PC's on all the time, so Discord's on all the time. Anyway, I'm rambling again, so thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Oh, don't forget, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.